all these dudes hovering around her, circling. Okay, I'm saying to myself, wait a minute, wait a minute, get the fuck away from her. You better get away from that. Well, hello there, love bugs. Hello there, Bellas. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, subscribe, and visit uptopbeauty.com. And if you are not already a part of our book club, please hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube. And for a small monthly fee of $5, you babies. Yes, yo can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it, if the YouTube gets it. Now, I need a pointer, and Fritz Pointer's fairy tale, The Pointer Sisters Family Story. Yeah, this the end, it's the last one, baby. We knew June had been struggling for quite some time, but we had hoped she had gotten it under control. I had decided that something more had to be done. We had to give it one more try. I felt like if we worked together as a family, we could save June from the throes of addiction. I organized an intervention involving Fritz and Aaron and my boyfriend at the time, James. We gave our best effort, but it didn't work. In the past, Aaron had paid for overdue Hollywood motel bills and extended stays for June and Bonnie when they were virtually homeless living on the streets of Hollywood. Now we needed to come up with a plan to save our baby sister. Fritz agreed to come to LA from Nevada for a dangerous intervention where he had to work undercover with a wire provided by the Hollywood Police Department, Crash Division. They wanted to corroborate certain statements by a corrupt probation officer about what was going on in June's house on Selma Avenue. Fritz got himself invited to the house by the parole officer to see for himself how well June was doing, but things didn't turn out as planned. June's drug dealer, this guy they called Uptown, was also the corrupt parole officer's client. It bees that way sometimes, y'all. As a probation officer, I didn't seen a lot of things. Now, I ain't never really seen no corruption with uh, POs. I haven't because you don't really have that much power as a PO, especially in the DMV. But um, I've definitely had where I have the victim and the shooter on the same caseload. And then unknowingly schedule them to visit me on the same day because shiz can happen. Okay, the junkie and the drug dealer. Give me man. two minutes, right? So I had this lady who was a hoe. She was crazy as sh but she was on um, drugs real, real bad. So she would not take care of her mental health as long as she was on drugs, right? Kind of reminded me of the girl, that very pretty girl that's from the DMV too, Maya Campbell. As long as she's not on drugs, her mental health is stellar. But when she on drugs, she can't think right. She doing all kinds of crazy things, right? But anyway, her childhood was trash. One time I had seen this young lady, let's say her name is Ebony. I had seen Miss Ebony right before I was about to go to lunch, okay? And once I saw her, I sent her on the way, okay? So when me and my Judy slash coworker goes out for lunch, I see Miss Stang standing out front of the courthouse. I'm like, what the f why are you still here? Miss Ebony, why are you still here for? All these dudes is surrounding her, all right? I'm saying to myself, wait a minute, hold on. Cause I had her on paper for process. All these dudes hovering around her, circling. Okay, I'm saying to myself, wait a minute, wait a minute, get the away from her. You better get away from that hooker. Miss Ebony, stop selling to out front of the courthouse. That's what you need to do. Things happen. 
like that. In a conversation at the parole officer's home when discussing Uptown, the drug dealer living in June's house, the parole officer told Fritz, if Uptown leaves, another drug dealer will just come and take his place. Uptown knows drugs how much she should take and when. Removing the drug dealer is not gonna solve the drug problem. You're gonna to have to get your sister help in one of those um, year long facilities because we know from the previous book, the Temptations book where David Ruffin had basically said, no, you're not gonna get the craving for uh, your drug out of your system within 30 days, okay? We also know this from when I was talking about soft white underbelly with the young lady who had passed, Amanda, how she said that when these addicts are about to be released from these 30 day programs, they're still struggling with the addiction, the cravings, you know? So these 30 day rehabs don't friggin' work. He couldn't believe what he was hearing. Fritz later had to come back to Hollywood to testify in court against the parole officer. It came out that she and Uptown were working together to extort money and keep June coked up. Got, now I ain't got nothing to do with that shit. Now that's what- uh. There were a lot of things that happened to June that we had no knowledge about. We just had to love her as much as we could. June was a grown woman and we couldn't make decisions for her. It was obvious to us that she never stopped using cocaine right up to her death. Damn, June. Damn, baby. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. When she was diagnosed with cancer, doctors said it was all through her body. We think she knew it. She didn't want to go through the pain of chemo and radiation. Once we saw the x-rays, we knew it was just a matter of time. When she was at her sickest, she couldn't talk or swallow. Bonnie, Ruth, and I would sing to her. She would mouth, I love you, when she had the strength. She was surrounded by love right up through the last moments of her life. June passed away peacefully. At 1.10 p.m., April 11, 2006, like a baby returning to the lap of her mother. Since return from a European tour in 2008, Bonnie, the original sister, the seminal artist, continued performing in venues like Pride Festivals and Hard Rock Cafes around the world. Despite some of the things she's gone through, she had always worked. She had tried to record with June, but that partnership never materialized, mainly because either June was relapsing or Bonnie was. They each battled demons. Prior to her death, June even lost her home due to the poor advice about finances and taxes. While June was unable to break the cycle, Bonnie was more successful and like a Picasso, her fourth album, this time on the independent label Platinum Trini Entertainment, was proof that she had decided to embrace life. Even though Bonnie wasn't performing with the Pointer Sisters and hadn't for a long time, I was still happy for her success and wanted the best for her. She was always very talented and a prolific songwriter. Over the years, Bonnie had written songs for herself as well as other performers, including Marvin Gaye, Dinah Ross, Smokey Robinson, and Sly Stone. Oh, I didn't know that. Did y'all know that Bonnie was a songwriter like that? That's, that's good information to know. Maybe I need to put that on a Q&A. Hmm. I talk with my sisters every day, Bonnie said. I ain't mad at nobody. I used to ask about getting back in the group how it could be so good if we could do just one more tour together. Ruthie replied, I'll think about it. Bonnie said to me this, wait a minute, hold on. How you gonna tell me? i think about it. Bitch, I was, it was my group. It was me and June's group first. Remember, we was a duo, okay? And when y'all wanted in, I said, come on in. Now that I'm trying to get back in the group, you like, I'll think about it? Well, I don't ask anymore. I just call to say, I love you, that's all. In the summer of 2015, Bonnie did join us on stage at the Greek Theater in Los Angeles, performing together for the first time in over 15 years. And she was set to appear on the Discopulous tour with domestic and international dates. 
The reason she overcame her personal demons when June didn't was because she met the right person. A man named Lonnie Jackson was the person who freed Bonnie from her freedom. They've been together ever since. Roxy, my granddaughter, even helps manage Bonnie along with other people who are on her team. So I'm very happy for how her career and her personal life has turned out. Child, now here's the part where Anita shades the fuck out of the Obama. Casting a vote for Obama was the first time I ever voted in my life. Her voting for Hillary Clinton, the lesser of the evils, in her words, not mine, was the second time, okay? She just knew she didn't want that Trumpy in office, but it didn't work right. Yes, we can was his theme. And since I always look for professional opportunities, this seemed like a slam dunk. I wish that we had gotten to perform and show him our support, especially since we had a song that fit so well with his platform, but it was not to be. Ooh, she pissed. Obama, Obama. Why you ain't called them pointer sisters round there to sing that song? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Can They mad at you, the Obama. They mad. She so mad that she put that shit in black and white, Obama. You called the Beyonce to sing the Etta James song. You did that, and then Etta James was pissed off. Remember when Etta James was like, I'm going to whoop Beyonce's ass when I see her? Why are you mad at the Beyonce, Etta James? That's not Beyonce fault. Uh, the Obamas like Beyonce and Jay-Z. They, they didn't like you. They liked your song, but they didn't want you They Obama, why are you so shady like that? Why you didn't call them sisters round there to sing at your white house? June is past, so she ain't going to steal the silverware. Bonnie, she's sober now. You could have had them sisters round there to sing Obama. Still, I was energized by his election as president. Even though I'm an entertainer myself, Obama showed people in America and around the world that blacks could be more than entertainers and athletes in order to be successful. That the most powerful man in America, if not the world, was a black man, was something to be proud of. And I was proud and shocked when he won, so was my mama. As far as my career in show business, I'm not sure what the future holds. I've been touring and performing for more than 40 years, starting when I was just 20 years old. I've had my share of physical and mental issues, which were exasperated by the deaths of three people so important in my life, Mother June, and my dear Jada. In 2001, I had to battle my own uterine cancer diagnosis. I had to go through surgery and chemo for six months, lost my hair and lived with the fear of death. I was despondent and taking antidepressants that would leave me drowsy and nauseous. I will say that surviving such devastating family losses was tough. And I think it made me strong enough to fight cancer. Conrad Lay, my manager, would meet me for every chemo treatment, holding my hand and giving me comfort. People who show that kind of concern and compassion give me the strength to keep on going. Thankfully, since December 2012, I have been completely cancer free. God bless you. Share to Facebook, subscribe, visit Up Top Beauty, and remember this, the same people that you meet on the way up will always be 
the same people that you meet on the way down. My naysayers, my patron loves you babies. Y'all better have a good one. Peace.